Good morning. Happy Friday. Well, we promised you two things. More CLI, so I'm here to deliver that, and the content will continue to be weekly, true to our name. So this week, we're looking at the Salesforce Force Apex command and everything that hangs off of that. All right, so let's just jump out of here and let's jump into Terminal. All right, so I'm just going to use my history very quickly. Remember, history tells me all of the commands that I've run previously, and I'm going to open my org. So up here, we've got one, two, three. So I'm going to go exclamation mark, one, two, three. It's easy. I can remember that. And that's going to pop my Salesforce environment. So no password manager, no how to remember your password. Bang, straight in there. All right, that's nice. Remember that one? So now we want to open up the dev console. I'm just going to hit refresh here. And hope that this comes up soon. No, there it is. All right. So what I mean, this is live, real stuff. These things happen. So in the dev console, I'm going to do command E. Command E opens up the anonymous Apex window where you can type in Apex and execute it. And then that dumps a log for you in the dev console. So if you've done that before, great. This is going to be useful for you, but that's all within the dev console. And let's just say it, the dev console is the dev console. Sometimes it's your best friend. A lot of the time it's very annoying. So let's just jump into the terminal. I'm just going to hit clear and clear that. Right, so how do I do that similar thing, but from the CLI? So SFDX force apex. Now, if I can't remember the command, I can do minus H here, and it tells me. So we're going to do the execute one, and do minus H again. It tells me all the things that I can do with that. All right, so let's start by just running it live here in the console, or the terminal, I should say. So minus U, D, that connects it to my dev org. And let's just run the same hello world example. Let's do hello Mike this time. Hit enter, control D. There we go, hello Mike. There it is, can you see it there? Brilliant. All right, so let's run that again. So I'm just gonna hit the up arrow go into there again. So that's like doing the command E in the dev console. This time I'm going to get a little bit more flashy. Let's go list accounts. All right. Give it a name. A for accounts equals select. Let's just do some simple SQL. Select ID name from account. All right. So that's my basic SQL query. Then I'm going to do system dot debug a let's just hit enter and then control d so this time what have i done i've just got my accounts there and you can see them coming out all right so that's good and of course i've got my history and i can see all those histories and i can rerun all of those but you know it'd be a little bit smarter if i want to build up a set of scripts that I need to run all the time. I might need to reset people's passwords, anonymize emails, do some updates, whatever it could be. All right, so let's just look at how we could do that with a script. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch a file. Touch just creates me an empty file. Let's just call this apex, um, apex script dot apex. All right, I'm going to go ls and we can see that there. And then because I've got VS Code installed, I'm just going to pop that open like this. All right, and I'm just going to do my command again. Uh, A equals, so let's just write this, select ID, name. Let's do website from... All right, and then I'm going to do system.debug. Uh, here are my accounts. All right, and save that. All right, so I've saved that. 
let's just come back to here. Now this time I'm just going to go back up and I'm just going to find where I did the help. I'm going to have a look. So there's some additional flags that we can set here. There's a minus F. So let's look at the minus F. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to go minus F and it wants a script. So I'm just going to type AP and then tab. And because terminal's clever, it knows that my file's there. All right. And then I'm going to do minus D, sorry, minus U and then D. All right. And I'm going to run my script. There it is again. Here are my accounts. All right. All good. All right. So you can build up a set of scripts. You can do some stuff here. And of course, you could pump that out, the results out to a file, apex results dot text, if I just want to do that. All right. So it doesn't put it to the screen. And if I just do code apex results, there's my results. Great. All right. So let's move on to the next one. So I'm just going to go history and let's do 216. I'm going to go exclamation mark 216. Okay. So what are we going to look at next? Let's fetch some logs. So let's do SF sfdx force.apex.log.get minus h. All right, so we want to get some logs. Now I'm pretty sure that there's some logs being generated because we're displaying them on our screen. So let's get the most recent log. So minus n. So if we just say one, that will get the last log. Okay, and let's do minus u D. All right, there's the log to my screen. Looks very cool. Um, let's have a look at see what other commands are there. So I'm just going to add a minus H on the end. Minus H. So what have we got? So we've got a minus C. So let's add a minus C for color. Now I'm not sure what my bash settings are, but it adds some subtle color, as you can see here. All right, but let's get a little bit more flash, right? If we wanted to just see the Sockle stuff, I could pipe, which means add another command. So the command I'm going to use is grep. So if you watch, don't be afraid of the command line by Peter Cheatham, he goes into this in detail, but I already know what I want. So I'm going to just do grep Sockle. All right. And it just brings back the Sockle query, the number of rows and the number of queries that I used out of the limits. So three, you know, I've gone from 10 lines or potentially thousands of lines to just three lines with a couple of commands. All right. So that's that one. So let's just have a look, see what else we've got here. Uh, Apex log should minus H. back one. All right, so we've done log get, log list, um, log list. Let's have a quick look at that one. I really want to get on to log tail. So let's do sfdx like this minus ud. All right, and it's going to list off all the logs. You know, there's a bunch of logs there. Okay, and what I can do is let's just do minus h. Okay. You can filter these or I could just send them to a file. Log like this. All right. Ooh. Uh, minus d, sorry, minus u d. Oh, uh, two minus u's there. That's why. So minus u d. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of this. 
Let's do this. All right, and then log code logs. All right, we've now got it in here and I can start to have a look at the different logs. All right, so that's good. That's all right, so that's that one. So let's, let's clear this. Now let's do something a little bit different. I saw that this was actually during the key, the developer keynote of last year's Dreamforce. Um, uh, what's his name? Andy Fawcett demoed log tailing. All right. Now log tailing is is pretty clever stuff. It allows you to stream the logs as they happen to your terminal session. So what I've got here is I've got another terminal session here. So I've got two here. So let's do sfdx force apex uh, log. Let's just check what the command is. There you go. So let's run sfdx force apex log tail minus d, sorry, minus u d. Okay, so that's going to start a tail. Okay, so it's not doing anything at the moment, but let's jump back to my other session. All right, and let's do sfdx force apex log, sorry, force execute. Let's execute something minus u d. Okay, so I've got a console session here. Now, if I do system.debug hello tail control D. Okay, you can see that that is streamed over here. All right, automatically, let's just close that down. All right, let's make sure that we've got our minus C for color, and I'm just going to pipe an extra command. I'm going to call it crep, and I'm going to say Mike. All right, so let's start that again. So I'm going to tail, and I'm going to look for the word Mike. So I'm going to come back to here. Let's use the up command. Let's go execute. Let's go system dot debug hello Mike. All right, control D. Hello Mike. There we go. So it's still there. And I can keep on running this. So let's just go code apex. Uh, not that one, sorry, my Apex script. Here, let's go, here is Mike's, here is Mike account. Save that. Let's just go up through here, quickly find our script. Here it is. All right, now look, there it is. Let's just rerun that again. Yep. Jump across to here and it keeps on coming. All right, so that's, that's the tailing. Hopefully you like that. So let's just, um, let's look at the next command. All right, so sfdx. So what, let's just remind myself where we're going next very quickly. All right, so we've done tech, we've done log get, log list, log tail. Now let's run some tests and get a report. So let's do sfdx force apex tests. Okay, Oops. so minus h on that one. All right. So let's do test run. So we've got apex test run 
minus h. Okay, so we do have some help for this one. So let's run some tests. Okay, let's just run. Uh, let's just run. Uh, local tests. So minus l run local tests. Minus u b. Okay, so that's triggered the test to run. Let's grab the recommended report. There you go. Okay, so I've just executed my local tests there. Now what I could do is I could also run individual tests there. So if I know the individual tests, so now that I have them on my screen, I can say minus n Let's just run this data table controller one. I'm just going to cut and paste it down there. And say minus u for d, um, minus r for human, although that is the default. Let's have a look. Uh, what's complaining about here? Uh, yeah, I need a run in there. Okay, there you go. So there's the results of that one. So this time, those were just displayed right to the screen. All right, I could introduce a wait. If I just want to wait for the report, I'll just put a minus one on there. Let's put a two. We're not actually going to wait two minutes, but you can see that gets rid of that error message and it just generates that. So what else do we have here? Okay, we can run test suites. Um, we can run individual test methods within namespaces and funky stuff like that. All right, we also can squash the report down to a format called tap, which is quite useful. All right, so let's just have a quick look at that. So let's go run minus L, let's go run local tests, which is basically all tests. Let's say minus R tap. Oop. Minus U D, it's always good to put that one. All right, so it dumps it out in a tap format, which is like a condensed version of the logs or the output. Um, tap stands for test anything protocol. We'll share something in the YouTube video if you want to learn more about that. Okay, it's a little, yeah, it's still human readable, but it's more passable by computers and other automation systems that you may have. All right, so that's tap. What else have we got? Let's just quickly go up here. I'm just conscious of the time. All right, so we've done a test run. Let's just actually go back up another level and just have a quick look. Okay, so we've done report, we've done the run. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've done everything. Actually, let's just look at the code coverage one. one, one more time. Let's just look at this one, Apex. Uh, run, in fact, let's do that, and then let's do minus C. Just go for the default, human, minus, Oop, a result format, Oop, my bad, so let's just do minus R human, Okay, here it comes. All right, so we now get code coverage there as well. All right, that is it. I'm sorry it's gone on a bit too longer than 15 minutes, um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. All right, take it easy.